This is the first video on use of MATLAB in control contexts. This video is going to focus on how do we solve ODEs. Therefore, we've got a very simple objective. We just want to show how can I use MATLAB to solve an ODE. And in particular, we're going to look at formulating analytic solutions not numeric solutions and you'll notice that if you do want a numeric solution you can get this from the analytic solution using subs.m but that's not covered in this video and you can look that up yourself later. We're focusing on time domain methods and you'll notice that after this particular video the rest of the videos in the series tend to move to Laplace and focus much more on control but this is an introductory video just to do the basics and say okay I've got an ODE which represents my system, can I solve it? Now, the viewers are reminded that there is also some discussion of this in the sixth video in the First Order Responses series. Let's define what we're going to assume then. So we're going to start with a first order differential equation, just a simple one. You'll notice what we've got here, a dx dt plus bx equals f of t and some initial condition x of 0 equals x0. And the question we want to ask is how do we enter this information into MATLAB in order to determine x of t? Now the basic command we're going to use is dsolve.m. That's a MATLAB built-in function. We will illustrate some basic usage but as with all the videos in this series um, on MATLAB you'll notice we encourage you to use the MATLAB built-in help if you want more detailed guidance or to see other things that this function might do. So we're only going to demonstrate limited functionality um, that will be useful to you. First example then. You'll notice we've defined an arbitrary first order ODE up here just to make it clear what's going on. 4 dx dt plus 3x equals f of t x of 0 equals x0. Now first of all, reminder, if there are symbolic variables somewhere in this problem, you must define them before you start. And when we go to the MATLAB window, we'll show you that. How then do we solve this differential equation above, um, where we know all the data, so we know the coefficients of the differential equation, we know what f of t is, and we know the initial condition. And you'll see we've given an example. First of all, the ODE is written like this. You'll notice 4 times big D x plus 3 times x. So the big dx is MATLAB's way of saying this represents dx dt. And the 4 times, you'll notice we've got 4 dx dt in our model. The next bit, the 3x, you'll notice we've got 3x in our model. Now, as a warning, you need to be careful to make sure you include this times. MATLAB is a programming language. If you just write 3x, it won't know what you mean. So make sure you put 3 times x, make sure you put 4 times dx, and then MATLAB will understand. The right-hand side, f of t, so you'll notice I've defined what my f of t is. I've said here it's t squared plus cos t, and this will only work if t is first defined as a symbolic variable. And then at the end, you'll notice I've added an initial condition. I've set the initial condition x of 0 equals 3. Now, other things you might want to notice about the syntax here, there's a quote there and a quote there around the definition of the basic model, and there's a quote here and a quote here around. Let's look at a second example then. In this particular example, you'll notice I've made the uh, input signal f of t a little bit simpler. I've said let's assume we just want a step input, a unit step. So everything's the same apart from the fact that I've put 1 in there. So the f of t is just 1 and that will give me a step. A third example. What happens if all the data is provided, I want a step input, but I'm going to provide the initial condition in a slightly different form. So instead of saying I've got the state at time 0, you'll notice the initial condition has said I know what the value of the state is at time 1. So I'm providing the initial condition as x brackets 1 equals 2 in this case. And a fourth example. What happens if you don't have 
the initial conditions. You don't know what the state is at any point in time. Well, you'll notice with this last example, I've just provided the model, the ODE, and I've not provided any other arguments. Now, if you do that, MATLAB will still solve the problem and it will have some undetermined coefficients in the solution because you've not provided it enough data to give a complete solution. And you wouldn't be able to solve for those undetermined coefficients until you provided uh, MATLAB with some initial conditions. OK, two more examples to come. What happens if you want to include some unknowns in your differential equation? If you look what I've got here, I've said, look, I'm going to define the differential equation as t dx dt plus kx equals f of t. And my initial condition I'm also going to write as some unknown. Now, if I want to do that, the first thing I need to do in MATLAB is make sure these variables I'm going to use are defined as symbolic. So I've written this statement, sims k capital T y0. Oh, that should be uh, y0 or x0. So here's an example of how I might use that. You'll see I've used y now instead of x. MATLAB's quite happy for you to use whatever variable you want. So you see the model is written here as t times dy plus y equals 1 and y dash of 0 equals 2. And this is equivalent to saying t dy dt plus y equals 1. And MATLAB will now solve this and it will write the answer in terms of this capital T because it's not defined but it's been given as a symbolic variable. And one final example on first order. What happens if you've got lots of symbolic data? So here I've got a T there which is not known, a K there which is not known, and an initial condition which is not known. And in this particular case again MATLAB will solve it and the solution will be written in terms of those symbolic variables. So let's go to MATLAB and demonstrate some of this code. So there's our command window. We just find the, uh, the lines. So we'll do it one at a time. Start from the top. First, define t as a symbolic variable because I'm going to define a function in terms of t. So the first line we did was this one here. OK, so you'll see we've got, um, let's see if we can make this window just a tiny bit bigger. So you can see it all. There you go. So xt equals d solve, and you'll see that's the line we put in the window. And what's MATLAB done is come up with this lovely solution here. Now, by the way, the solution goes off the right hand side of the page. I'm not too worried about that. The key thing is MATLAB does it for you. What about the next example we showed? We had this one here, line four, where we did a step response. And there you see, come out with a nice neat solution for you. There's the step response of 4 dx dt plus 3x equals 1 with the initial condition x of 0 equals 3. The next line, you remember I changed the initial condition so it wasn't defined at time 0 but defined at time 1 and again MATLAB's quite happy. Out it comes with the answer. And the final example on this one, you'll notice I gave no initial conditions. So there's the answer with no initial conditions and what you will notice Perhaps if I draw it down here, there's an undetermined coefficient, c2, because we didn't give it initial conditions it can't solve. OK, so you've got one undetermined coefficient because this is a first order differential equation. What were the next examples then? So next you'll see we said, OK, let's create some more symbolic variables. There they are, k, t and y0. And let's see if we can solve these problems with symbolic variables. So here was the first example. You'll notice we did t dy dt plus y equals 1 and gave initial condition y of 0 equals 2. And what does the solution look like? Most important thing to note, if you look at the solution here, is the solution is written in terms of capital T. <coughs> so it's solved a generic equation and you can put in whatever t you like. What about this next example? Let's try this one. Here, you'll notice we've got symbolic variable capital T, symbolic variable K, and the initial condition is written as a symbolic variable. And what do we notice with the solution? All those symbolic variables occur, occur in the solution. So if you knew what those variables were, you can plug them straight in. A second order ODE then. Here's an example, a d2x dt squared plus 
bdx dt plus cx equals f of t, and I've given some initial conditions, x of 0 equals x0, x dot of 0 equals x dot 0. How do we enter this into MATLAB and determine x of t? And again, a reminder, please use the built-in help for more guidance than I'm giving here. So a simple example. You'll notice it's just like doing the first order system. So first of all, this term here, 2 d2x dt squared, what does that get translated to? It gets translated to 2 times capital D 2x. So the MATLAB syntax is this capital D 2 means differentiate twice. I've then got this 6 dx dt, and you'll see that's gone in here, 6 times dx, and my 4x, 4 times x. Again, you'll notice the reminder, make sure you put the multiplies in, so MATLAB knows what you're doing, and again, make sure you put in the quotes. OK, that's how MATLAB works. It uses these quotes. What happens if I want to supply the initial conditions? And you'll notice I just give two extra arguments. In quotes, initial condition, x of 0 equals 1. Initial condition here for the derivative, so dx0, that essentially means x dot of 0 equals 0. That's how it's interpreted. And as before, of course, you don't have to use time equals 0 if you don't want to. You could use time equals 1 or something similar. And a third example, could you include some symbolic variables? Well, again, this last example, you'll see I've included a symbolic variable down here, k, in the differential equation, just to see if MATLAB will cope. OK, so we've opened up our um, MATLAB windows. So let's find the second order example and see what happens. So first of all, there's the step response with a simple second order system. And what do you notice? I've given no initial conditions, and therefore I've got two undetermined coefficients, C17 and C18. But other than that, it solved it fine, just as we expect. Next example, I've given it the initial conditions. And what do you notice? It's solved it exactly. There's no undetermined coefficients anymore. You've got the exact answer. So that's nice, it will solve second order differential equations, it will give us an exact analytic answer. And then line 15, this last one, what happens if I include a symbolic variable? And that's quite a challenge perhaps, there's the symbolic variable k, and what do you notice? This k has appeared in the solution. And indeed the solution goes on quite a long way because it's a challenge. But the complete solution is there just in case you need it. What about third order examples? Well, hopefully this is straightforward by now. You can see what's going on. So if I want this third bit, the 2 d3x dt cubed, then I write this like this. 2 times d3x. Here's the second derivative. This is the same as we did on the previous slide. 2 times d2x. Here's the first derivative, 6 times dx. And the 4x becomes 4 times x. And in this case, in order to solve completely, I need three initial conditions. So I've supplied three there in terms of the various derivatives, but you can probably supply them in another form if you want to. Now, just a warning here, I think if you try to put symbolic variables into this, you might cause a problem because there may not be a simple solution, but you can always try and see what you can get away with. So let's, again, do this uh, Last problem, we should have a third order example stored on here somewhere, so we can just demonstrate it. There it is. So there's that third order example we've just done. You plug it in, and lo and behold, MATLAB's given you the solution. Now, you might not like the format it's given. It is rather messy. However, the key point is it has done it for you. The solution is there. So in conclusion, we've demonstrated the DSOLVE tool for finding analytic solutions to simple ODEs. In order to generate data for the corresponding plots, if you want a numeric data, you could use subs.m, um, but that's not something we're covering here. And we've just shown a limited functionality for DSOLVE, but I would encourage you to explore a bit more and see what else.